There is a lot of drama in courtrooms. Who visits them? What is the feeling in the room? And what role does art play, if any, in setting the tone? defining spaces and humanizing public spaces. The artwork that we make um, is architectural artwork, so it's actually part of the built structure. And, um, and when we're designing, we like to think about how the public is gonna use and interact with that space. And since our, our artwork is gonna be part of the building in that space, we like to base our design decisions on how we think um, the public is going to view it, is going to see it, is going to interact with it. When you're in a public place and you see sculptures setting in a park, kids climb on it, whether it's intended to be or not. In a museum, your hand is slapped and you, your bells and whistles go off. I've been escorted out of museums for trying to touch because the stone is so tactile. So I went a step further, and I started creating this series of what I call bench people. The female justice has a group of three similar figures to her. The male judge is, going, is looking up and telling a story about, what, about the rule of law, about what goes on inside the justice center. And he's talking to this little kid. I've had all the stones delivered to Frank Swanson's studio so that he could do my profiling for me. I gave Frank my models, and he drew up a small template, which then he scaled up to a larger template to attach to the stone. The wire is going to be following the outline of the sculpture. And that wire, the cable, has these little diamond Cheerios on it. When that cable hits this cable, it'll make that popping sound, and then Frank will know that he's got to make a slight adjustment. And by the time it comes to me, I'll have these nice surfaces, and then I could come in and start carving all the detail work, all the undercuts, and the actual final, final shape. So then after blocking it out and getting big chunks of stone off, then I come in with this diamond blade. They say diamonds is a jewel's best friend, but they have no idea how much diamonds is a sculptor's best friend. So it's almost like a paintbrush. I could get in, I could flick stone off, I could really cut but I work my way all the way around. And that's the thing about sculpture, it's three-dimensional, it's not a relief. So I have to know from the back, he's bang on. He looks just like he's going to look, more or less. <laughs> but when I start tweaking something here, it could make something down here look not quite right. The one thing I want in all of these sculptures, more than anything, because they're supposed to be functional, 
is that people will feel a sense of comfort with them. So if the texture doesn't feel good, then they won't want to approach them. I'm Gary Olson. Uh, the sculpture I'm working on for the Judicial Center is Ralph Carr himself, who it's named after. It's going to go in an education wing uh, that's especially geared towards children learning who Ralph Carr was about and about our judicial system. When I create a, a large piece like this, I always start with a model first, a maquette, to work out the composition. It's much easier to make adjustments on a small piece than a large piece. What I really needed on this one was where the folds fall in a uh, sport coat or suit coat and uh, dress slacks. So I got a piano bench and would rotate on that and just uh, click the shutter as I went around uh, and printed out images as a guideline where those folds have to go. I usually will start out with a nude just to get the anatomy right, get the knees in the right place, elbows, especially shoulders, uh, just to really make sure proportions are correct. So the most attention really has to go into the, uh, the face to be a good likeness. It's a lot easier to sculpt a piece without glasses, but every photograph I found of the governor, he was wearing glasses, so I've determined he has to have those. The best example of well-done glasses I think that anybody can come up with is uh, what Borglum did on Mount Rushmore with uh, Teddy Roosevelt. And it's depicting part of them, but not all of them. Shoes are actually, the basic shoe shape is easy. The part, one of my least favorite parts of a sculpture is shoelaces, especially these real fine ones. Um, again, the trick is to not show too much. Once this, we determine that the piece is finished, it has to go to a mold maker. There's a rubber and plaster mold made. Um, we get a wax copy out of that mold. They're all cast in parts and then welded together. So it's been a long process and it's really fun to finally come around the corner in this education wing and see him in his final home here. I'm Ann Shutan, and these are the justice doors for the new Judicial Center that I've created, and I'm making uh, wooden waterfalls for the law library. This is called Peaceful Resolution. Doors and the back panels in the library are all from one tree. With the big doors, which I built first, I'm introducing the curve. So I have one wombly with, the, with each door. I call it a wombly because it actually looks like what that sounds like to me. It's really fun and exciting for me to take such a strong medium like wood, a hard medium, and make it look like it's liquid. And what the womblies present is liquid wood, but it's still a really strong, hard medium. So this is me playing with where exactly should I leave the Wombly? So, you know, like this, how boring is that, right? And I could just start playing with it, and it's like a wave. It's like, can you see that? Just even the um, shadow that comes up as you move it. So these bronze pieces that I inlay, both in these back panels and also my big doors, are created by Bill Valier, who's a lo another local artist. This is what I really think of as that adds such a great touch to these pieces, because it, it's like the jewelry for, the, for my furniture, the jewelry for the doors that I talk about. Okay, excellent. Now so I'll Yep. Right. 
it too. Um, my hope is that when people come into the library, because of these panels that are at the end of this big wall at the end of the library, it'll be calming in such a frantic, you know, world and law and things going on and yes and no and right and wrong and it's kind of nice to have um, art. I feel incredibly grateful and lucky that I get to be a part of it and that my doors and my back panels will be will outlive me by hundreds of years, which is very exciting. I'm Amy Bauer and uh, we're from Minneapolis and the name of this piece in the Grand Corridor is This Promises Water. This 150 foot long piece, it starts by me making this piece first of all without all the numbers on it and, and getting that approved by, you know, the stakeholders. You know, it kind of was these small vignettes, these stories. It's all made from Denver stuff, you know, like um, I took historical photos, I took contemporary shots from the city. But then I make this map for production reasons so that then these numbers get transferred over to the top right corner. Then I just pull out these boxes and I hand them up and they get set in the mastic. Now, if ever these were to break, we keep these a digital file of all these and they could be reprinted. Looking good, man. I like it. Now we're ready. This has been grouted. It's been cleaned up. So now we're about to place one of these elements. And um, Brian made them so that they're hollow. They have holes in them. It's stoneware. They're all handmade by Brian. I do a lot of research. It's one of my favorite parts. So um, I visited a Supreme Court judge. I asked him what did the rule of law mean to him, and um, he gave me some ideas. And I just, um, you know, the rule of law is essentially this idea that the people are responsible to know the law, and then the court system is responsible to uphold that law. So I did that, I used that idea metaphorically throughout. And I, so I thought about this piece, especially because I see it as sort of the hinge between the appellate court and the Supreme Court. So I thought about it as a building block, really, um, of determination, of curiosity, of perspective, of, of really building something. President. Yes. You ready? I'd like you to scoop it over to your right. Now, do I want to get more lined up? I think I do. Yeah, I just I'm going to go back out. Or to Chris. Back out. Yeah. Follow it in. My name is Thomas Sayer. I'm an artist from the great state of North Carolina. I'm Christian Carco. Um, this is the, I work with Thomas Sayer in this piece we've been working on for the last year or so. What it really is is a kind of chandelier that you walk beside and all that changeability and sparkle um, when you walk up and down is kind of delightful. The, the installation started Friday when we loaded a truck in North Carolina. And now we are sequentially raising each of nine sections. Okay, Thomas, yep. your turn. What we're doing is tightening each one of these parts equally uh, so they, the module above and below are growing together. And if you, one guy goes too fast, they'll be crooked. Okay, Chris? Yep. Getting close. It's very difficult to make uh, these wampy rings um, wampy so they catch the light, as we've discussed. But getting those to be flat so that you, we can stack all this many of them um, involved. A, so when you, when you lay it out on a sheet of stainless, 
it's a very odd shape. So we laid those very odd shapes out on a number of sheets of stainless and then uh, cut them out with uh, a laser. So this is indeed a very site-specific piece. It, it is the shape it's in because this is a very narrow, tall space and therefore the piece needed to be very tall and narrow and not to get in the way of all the stairs and people coming up and down and not be reachable by those same people coming up and down. So the meta central metaphor of this piece is to rhyme with how and what this court, the appellate court and Supreme Court of the state of Colorado, what they actually do here. So if the light is the rule of law, these hoops are various judgments or movements um, in our constitution to help refine that. The text depicts seminal moments and, and mostly places where the courts have actually, the court, courts from Colorado actually have been. And this piece is about light and the interruption of light as it finds its way down through all these myriad of reflective surfaces. Some of the light finds its way all the way through the center where Christian's standing and it illuminates this medallion, terrazzo medallion of the state of Colorado, which has all the judicial districts and county lines. The rule of law, law being the light, and it shines on Colorado. Y'all should see this. I have a very good perspective. It's good. Cool, it's good. man. It's good. <laughs> I'm part of the artist team of Wow House, and we made a sculpture called Suru. The inspiration for this project came from our research into both the natural history of this region and the kind of social history of, uh, of the site and of Ralph L. Carr in particular, uh, what we found was that the whooping crane is common to, to both histories. When the whooping crane was a ubiquitous uh, kind of global migratory species, it was very commonly symbol symbolic to a lot of cultures for notions of justice and loyalty and longevity. And we also found a tie-in with uh, Ralph L. Carr's stance on the Japanese internment camps. Uh, as a thank you, the government of Japan sent him 1,000 origami cranes. So we made the sculpture as an homage to the crane and to Ralph L. Carr's courage. And also as a a kind of emblem of the idea that law is something that protects all living creatures, not just the human race. Hi, I'm Ken Bernstein, and this is my project for the Colorado Justice Center titled The Face of Justice. Six of them are human beings of different ages and ethnicities, and within my community, I found the people that were perfect for these images. This is me, <laughs> with lots of words. That's me, but it's me uh, as a younger age. When Ken asked me to be a part of this project, he, I went to his studio and he took lots of pictures. Look up, look sideways, look down. Look north, look south. And it's pretty good to be able to be forever young uh, <laughs> when hanging <laughs> in a portrait like this. I'm now putting paint into the airbrush so that I can make, I can paint on the painting. It doesn't really take very much.
Each painting has a different section from the Colorado Bill of Rights. It's a dialogue between the language and people that are alive today. So we pull this frisket paper off to expose the stencil without pulling the paint up most of the time. <laughs> doesn't really need much paint because I want it to be transparent. So now I pick up the stencil, see what I got. The law library is the place where the language of the law is stored and where it is kept and People are the ones who read the law, interpret the law. So the idea with these pieces is to incorporate the people and the letter of the law together. No person shall be deprived of life, liberty, property, without due process of law. My name's David Griggs. We're standing under my piece called Premise. It's a giant chandelier uh, inside a two-story office lobby space for the new Colorado Justice Center. And this piece is very much um, about um, nature, um, balance in nature, the laws of nature, how our legal system seeks the same sort of balance. Go oh, flatter. There you go. fabricated four separate elements here, starting with the uh, corona, um, and then working towards stem rings, um, the leave elements that are part of the stem rings, uh, the wall relief that's really uh, based on Colorado prairie grasses, uh, and also the art glass, which is a silhouette of a Colorado forest. Uh, the anchor of this piece is really what we call a corona. It's a, it's a halo chandelier. So it's got a fiberglass skin, which is translucent. It has um, some steel inside it, which holds it together. And of course, it's cabled up into the ceiling. And it's got LED lights around the inside of it. And so this involves about three different um, operations, companies that put it together, as well as the engineering for it. Um, as well as the uh, painting on the, on the structure, on the, on the surface of it. So it's, it's quite a uh, coordination just for that. I'm just trying to do a blend right now. I'm just trying to dust it in semi-transparent. Translucent clear. Yeah, let's do that and then we'll uh, try the lights. Let's see what we get. Okay. I'm gonna do one light coat, okay? Yep. Light. Well, it might not be a light coat, but it's gonna be light coverage. Right. Heavy coat, light coverage. Okay. <laughs> it's looking good. I'm excited to see it with the lights on and see it in the real space. I think we're getting there. The stem rings are really a series of Schedule 40 pipe, um, which are rolled, treated, painted, uh, and then all assembled, um, and then attached to the, um, the resin leaves that, you're, that are uh, an extension of the stem rings. Yeah, and a little back towards you. There you go. The orange one is good. Uh, erecting the piece was quite a challenge. It's about 20 feet in diameter, about 700 pounds for just the, uh, the corona element. Hopefully the combination of uh, the piece itself, its properties, and the site will bring up questions in viewers' mind 
and suggest the metaphors of going for that rule of law, um, the balance in nature, the laws of nature which inspired the piece. Very happy with it. Anytime an artist is selected for a public project like this, it is a real honor and responsibility to do a good job. So I hope I've done that and hope people will enjoy it for generations to come. If I could do th this kind of work for the rest of my life, I'd be very, very happy. When I leave here, this, is, this now belongs to Colorado. You know, it no longer be belongs to me. I will have it on my website, and I will certainly talk about the experience but it's no longer mine.